Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for an FAQ session on lithium energy storage. If you did not know, more and more installers and solar experts plan on using lithium energy storage solutions for their next projects. Many of them are still facing challenges on how to sell and install them properly. During this webinar, we will be covering the following topics and answering any of your questions you may have. How, to, how does lithium energy storage work? Why should I install it? Why lithium iron phosphate chemistry? How does it compare with other battery chemistries? How to integrate lithium energy storage to the new and existing PV array? And how, to, how the future of the market development for energy storage? If you can please submit your questions towards the end of the seminar as they will be answered at the end. And I would like to introduce you to Jing Yu, Fortress Power CEO, to begin this webinar. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I hope everybody is uh, safe and, you know, uh, we all keep up and uh, keep the business going here. Um, Jamie made already a um, quick introduction and Jamie, thank you for that. Uh, this is the topics we're going to cover here today. Um, we're going to start with a uh, why energy storage um, in terms of the market development and also the benefits that your clients can um, get from energy storage solutions. We're also going to talk about a company, and I'm really going to focus on a battery technology comparison there. I know there's some, you know, some confusion about different lithium chemistry and how this is going to compare with the lead assets batteries. We're going to dive into that. Um, and we're going to also talk about, you know, different inverters that we work with and also the turnkey solution that we provide for residential and commercial applications. In the end, I will touch base quickly about the design tool uh, we developed and uh, which is also available for our authorized installers and dealers. Now, solar has had great success in the past 10, 20 years. Um, now, the, you know, uh, the challenge that we have with the solar, of course, is that um, you don't match the demand and uh, generation at the same time, right? In a, during the day, you have a plant of sun, but then you might not at home consume that. And that also adds a lot of stress on the grid. Um, that means the grid has to take, you know, absorb those power. But in the evening, when sun goes away, you're home. Now um, you need uh, the utility companies to fire up some power plants, and that's very costly for them. And another challenge we have is, you know, when the uh, power goes off, the PV inverters are mandated to shut off. Now you have beautiful panels on your roof, but it's not producing anything. And third challenge is also that some utilities, like in Hawaii, um, they are saturated with solar, and their grid is are pretty vulnerable, and they just prohibit you to send extra power back to the grid. Now, all those challenges can be solved if you have a battery that hook up to your PV systems. Now you can match the need and demand locally, which increase efficiency. You also help the grid to be more resilient and you provide backup power for your customers during power outage. And of course, um, also for some areas, you can send an extra power back to the grid you can also you know, maximize your PV production. <laughs> and this is uh, how now, the, you know, if you look on the phone um, 20, 30 years ago, it's very heavy, bulky. You need a you know, very big battery. And these days with the lithium, everything's getting very compact. And also thanks to the large deployment of lithium battery on automotive, the price has also come down a lot. So it's now become really more economical for the people. Here's how the um, energy storage uh, marking are developing in the next 20 years. As you can see that we're gonna see very nice growth um, throughout the next 20 years on, in all the countries. United States, it's on the number two market. In fact, I believe it's projected this year to be the you know, number one, but again, China, US, um, those gonna be you know, the top two countries. And if you look in also in the you know, Latin American market, which we have also a lot of clients there, this is also a very nice growing market. It's actually the word number four. Uh, it's also gonna be in you know, a very nice growth here, you can see it. In the US, uh, here's the market projection by GTM Research. 
in the U.S., you can see that uh, it's going to still be dominant mainly by utilities. Uh, like I said, utility companies also see the value of energy storage deployment for their grid resilience. So they are actually now start procuring a lot of um, or investing a lot of um, in a PV plus storage space. But looking to the residential and the non-residential, you also see a nice growth here. And I think this is, you know, area that a lot of um, folks um, who participate in this webinar are going to be specialized in. So it is a very nice growth for through all the segment. Then let's take a look in the Central Latin American energy storage market here. The same here, utility is very dominant. For remote power, which is like off-grid, is a lot of places that don't have, you know, access to the power and the residential and commercial section, you also see nicely um, average-wise 30% growth or even more. So it is a very exciting time for energy storage deployment. Now, traditionally, when we started, um, battery backup systems is with the off-grid. Um, there was the main market, but in the last few years, dynamic has changed. Now, more and more grid interactive energy storage systems has been deployed. People use it, you know, for backup, um, some areas for self supply, and then your particular uh, country or region that you have a time of use rate, you can use that to shave your demand charge, uh, your peak charge. For commercial clients in some um, areas or countries that you may subject to the KW charge, we're going to touch base later, and energy storage is a great solution for you to curtail your demand charge and help your commercial clients to um, reduce their cost. And I believe actually in Arizona, even for residential, you have also the demand charge as well. So the storage can also help the homeowner to shape that demand charge. Here's how in the uh, off-grid applications, pretty simple. You have the solar panels, you have a hybrid inverter, convert the power from solar panel, power the home, and then excessive power is stored in the battery. Now, a lot of time people will have a generator and as a backup source. Now, unfortunately, we are getting more, have a more and more natural disasters, like a storm, you know, all those um, things that uh, actually has to make the, make the grid to shut off. Or in that case is, like I mentioned, if you have a PV, inverter, the PV inverter will have to shut off. But if you have a hybrid inverter, most of them has built in all the chains for relay. It will disconnect from the grid and form its own island system. So it's going to operate like an off-grid system that I showed before. And it will keep your house up and running. And when it's tied to the grid, when you have the grid, you still can um, send excess power back to the grid as well. Now, the priority is going to be uh, the PV is going to power the load, charge the battery, and then any excessive one, go back to the grid if you have net metering. And sometimes if it's cloudy days, the PV is not producing enough, then you can take power from the grid to charge the battery, to keep the battery full, because that's always the priority. They want to keep the battery full in case if there's power outage, then your battery you know, is ready to go. You can also integrate your generator um, if you have one, or if you want have, one, if you want one, but it's not you know necessary. This is very popular. We've seen that uh, self supply in you know Arizona, Hawaii, Arizona, and Caribbean, mainly in the area that you are not allowed to send excessive power back to the grid, or maybe you can, but you don't want because you know you send power back to the grid. It's not going to give you any credit. In this case, you can see that you are going to do, you're not sending power back to the grid, but you will take the grid as a backup. So uh, it's a normal day, sun, rays, produce power, power your home, charge the battery, and then in the evening, your battery will be discharged to power the home. And in case in the middle of the night, you need some additional power, then the grid will kick on to power the home, and then next day we have the same cycle again. 
in California, as a lot of you probably know, that between four to nine, there's a high um, peak period. Um, the electricity cost can be as high as you know 50, 60 cents um, per kilowatt hour, and off peak may be only you know 16, 16 or 17. So in that case, you can add a um, battery to it, and what it will do is that you can release the battery power during the peak time, and then um, off peak you can either use the PV or grid to charge the battery. Now, in that case, is you actually also do not need to have PV, but of course, and just economically makes sense if you hook up the PV, can get the tax credit, and uh, you know use the clean energy. Now we're seeing more and more inquiring about um, um, demand curtailment applications. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, if you are uh, for a lot of commercial clients, for instance, in California or here in New York, especially in New York City, you, the utility will charge you very high rate for the demand charge, the KW charge. Uh, we've, uh, you know, um, done a project sizing for customers uh, and seen electrical bill as high as $35 per KW. So you have a large office building. You can draw a few hundred kW, and if, if that happens at once, you're gonna get charged for that. So the utility takes the highest rate, highest number in a month, and then multiply whatever the amount of dollar they're gonna charge. So we've seen a lot of clients that over 50% of electric bill is the kW charge. So if you just have solar, that's not sufficient. But if you put a solar in a storage, and you can curtail those peaks and keep the KW charge um, under certain threshold you want to maintain. And that's gonna save you a lot of money. So who we are, we are um, a lithium iron phosphate battery manufacturer based in Southampton, Pennsylvania. We have a 30,000 square facility where we have our R&D team, sales, logistic, and uh, uh, team here, you know, to ship the product to the customer, also help on the technical support side, um, as, as well as you know any other um, support that we need to provide to our customers. We do have also a, a third part warehouse in California where we ship a lot of product there and ship to our customer in the West Coast and Hawaii. Uh, we are going to have a Florida a warehouse very soon so we can also serve the customers in, um, in, the, in the South, as well as, you know, down further even to the South America. Um, a 45 megawatt installed worldwide. Uh, we're also very proud to be the, the, ba the exclusive battery supply for SEPTA, the local railway company. Um, as you can know that in the railway application, safety is very important. And there's a, you know, a reason for them why do they choose the chemistry that we offer. We're gonna talk about that later. So our products are manufactured in China, in Shenzhen. It's actually considered to be Silicon Valley in the East. So a lot of um, smart engineers um, there. It's actually a hub for um, polyelectronics and also lithium battery manufacturing there. Uh, the, again, the lithium iron phosphate that we're gonna, we focus on, that has been actually on the market for over 10 years. Now, before it was primarily deployed in automotive, and now it's been bought into the renewable energy space. So it's a proven technology. If you look on the lithium ion, the nickel manganese cobalt technology, that has really gained its popularity since 2015, that you know, companies like LG Chem and Panasonic and uh, Tesla starting to you know, put in a lot of investment to build up the facility. And we're gonna talk about the pros and cons of both technologies and in the next few slides. Here are the three products line we offer. 18.5, the 10, and the 5. So 18.5 is more popular for homes. The 5 and 10, it's more for the smaller homes and also some, you know, like a cabinet solution. Somebody here, like we here in the Northeast, people have their cab, the small cabins. And it's perfect for them to put the smaller systems. This is a new product we're going to have um, in late May, early June called eFlex. Personally, very excited about this product. Um, we add a few uh, unique features to it. It comes with an SD card, 
uh, storage all the data. Remember, we offer the 10 years warranty, so warranties for us is very important. That's why we store all the data, make sure you know, that if there's a problem, we can go back, take a look, see what's going on. It also comes with, with a built-in Wi-Fi, so you can remotely, uh, through the cloud, monitoring the battery. If there's any issues, you don't have to drive to the site. It will give you know an error message. It's not like we want to see the you know error message, but again, I know a lot of job sites are far away, so have this functionality. It's going to save you a trip. It's also designed to be able to wall mountain, or if you want to stand on floor, that's fine, and also can be fit into the computer server rack. Uh, we actually also going to come up with a fortress enclosure with a built-in bus bus, makes the installation much easier. Here are some technical specification. I'm not going to go through, you know, one by one in details. Now, the key is when you're looking to get power electronics like inverters or charge controller, make sure you choose 48 volts. That works with our battery. Now, 48 volts is a been a popular, you know, historically here in uh, America and uh, in, in entire, you know, North and South America continental, and it's also safe voltage that you can work with. A lot of inspectors are more comfortable with the 48 volts instead of high voltage batteries. The lithium battery is different than lead assets. It does have some um, battery management systems. So, and it's programmed to work in a certain voltage, amperage range, and also temperature range. So you have to make sure when you design the systems that are, take those in consideration. We do have also um, section that are uh, webinar section towards on design and installation, and they will go over a lot of you know details how you design the systems, what steps you have to pay attention to. So if you are interested, you can you know uh, stay tuned. We will inform you the next webinar about the design installation. The Evo you can stack tw twelve. The flex is a fifteen. Um, the other ones are two or three, again, small for small applications. The Evo has also local monitoring, which you'll be able, you know, for any clients that are not technical savvy, they can use the local monitoring to see the state of charge, um, voltage, et cetera, et cetera. The first two has a uh, communication, so you can communicate with the inverters and you can also communicate between the batteries. The 10 or 5, you will similar use like a lead assets battery. You can set up the amperage voltage range um, in the inverter, and the inverters will also you know, control uh, the batteries. They all come with a breaker. Um, in terms of the warranty, uh, we for countries like US, Canada, and some other countries, we have 10 years. Uh, and for some new countries that we start with the five years, of course, with a lower price tag. And then uh, once we you know train installers or we know that the, the installers in this particular countries are very well trained uh, with their battery systems, then we also extend that to the 10 years. In both cases, we offer 6,000 cycles. Now, I want to also talk about a battery management systems. Um, and this is a new to a lot of folks, um, especially who you know installed lead assets before. Now, for lithium battery, you need to get it. When you buy any lithium battery, you have to make sure they have a good battery management systems. So that is really to protect the battery cell for safety, for reliability. Now on the market, there's a two main, two different um, battery management systems. One's called MOSFET based and another is contact based, or you can also call it relay based. So it's you know, built with a solid state relay like our Evo Eflex. They're all going to do the protection in terms of the temperature, voltage, and uh, um, you know, overcurrent and short circuit. The, and of both the MOSFET and contact-based battery management system we offer also can do cell monitoring and balancing, which is very important for the longevity of the entire battery bank. The Evo and Eflex, we choose to focus on the contact base. It's you know, first. The contact-based BMS can handle large charge and discharging current. So therefore, you know, big systems, especially these days, a lot of inverters are getting really powerful. So it will also need that battery 
be able to handle that large charge and discharge current. So that's one reason. And second reason is also, uh, you know, this is just more robust for the big systems. Um, that's why we use this one. And we also build a smartness inside. They can communicate with each other. Uh, you can talk between inverter and a battery. Of course, you know, if the inverter also allows to communicate with the batteries. And between the batteries, you connect with the RG45 cable. It will also uh, talk to each other, make sure they're always balanced and on the same level during the, uh, the you know, the, the operation. And also, we are working on the remote monitoring options for the EVO and EFLEX. There is uh, three types of cells available in the market, cylindrical, porch, and prismatics. For the 5 and 10, we use cylindrical. It's a smaller, more flexible. Um, the prismatic, again, it's a rectangular shape. Um, it's, you know, more robust, especially for um, large applications. This is how the monitoring looks like on the e -vote. You can see the voltage, state of charge, the current, and the power. And there's also error codes here. If uh, for whatever reason you overcharge your battery, then this high V, the high voltage, will come up, give you, you know, um, warning. Or if there's any problem, then you'll be able to also um, see it. And this is makes different than the uh, let us that battery or other lithium battery, you not know what's going on with the battery for whatever reason, you know, the system shuts off, that it gives you uh, information. We're going to focus on this section a little bit more. Um, now, lithium is getting really popular. I'm sure you know it. You get a lot of news uh, about it and people talk about it. Now, there's also a difference between the lithium family. Um, widely commercialized are three uh, lithium products of technologies. One is called lithium ferro, also you name it lithium iron phosphate. Some people call it LFP or LIFO. So it's all talk about the same chemistry. So I want to point that out, then you don't get confused when you read the different articles. And there's another, it's called lithium ion. Um, be more precise, nickel, manganese, cobalt. Short term is NMC. The manufacturers like Tesla, LG Chem, Panasonic, they focus on this type of chemistry. And then you have also the, you know, lithium polymer LiPo, which I think this is, you know, now less and less manufacturers use that. Um, mainly are focused on the first two type of chemistries. Now, why we choose the LFP chemistry? You know, let's use LFP, the short term. It's safe. It does not have the um, combustible element like a cobalt. So cobalt is very temperature volatile. And it's also a problem. It cannot be recycled. That's why um, this, you know, creates environmental issue with the, the lithium, the LP chemistry, all the elements chemistry can be recycled. And then make us more comfortable to go with this um, chemistry again. We're in a renewable energy space. We want to make this earth much better place for the next generations. It has also good thermal stability and the other tools are more vulnerable. Um, now, in terms of economics, the LFP delivers substantially more cycles. We guarantee 6,000 cycles and the others are you know, less than the, um, the 3,000 cycles. Because it has the, all the chemical elements used very stable, so it degradates also slower, um, which makes lights last longer. Now, the disadvantage of the LFP is that the power density. So, you know, the uh, in terms of the what hour per kilogram or what hour per, um, you know, per space that are, that are, they are more, uh, they're less dense as NMC and LiPo. That's why you see that, um, Automotive company, they are more focused on the cobalt based lithium chemistry because they want to pack as many as possible in a small space. Um, of course, it comes with the cost of uh, safety and cycles. Now, we've seen that in the, in the renewable energy space that people are towards to lithium ferrophosphate um, because it's you know safe and more cycles. 
there's a video you can go to the YouTube, just type in LP versus NMC nail test, and you'll be shocked how quickly that NMC battery cell will catch fire. So when you have a nail pen tree through, you create a short circuit and it's gonna, you know, generate a lot of heat instantaneously, and that cell is gonna explode right away. While with the, the LFP chemistry throughout the whole test, you only see some smoke, um, and that's it. Now, in the next few slides, we're gonna talk about the charging, discharging, and also what's gonna impact the uh, lithium battery lifespan. So this is a typical graphic of um, a charging curve of a LFP chemistry. Now it has like three stages. Qualification stage or called a pre-charge stage, buck, and then absorption. There's no float. Uh, that's different than the uh, lead assets batteries. Now you have in a pre-qualification, you have a small amperage is coming, the voltage is start to jump up. And then you're gonna to go to the um, charge of the battery with a constant current. The voltage is gonna climb up to the constant voltage level. And then it's gonna, you know, pretty much maintain in that range. At the same time, the current is gonna drop very quickly to zero. Now, uh, if it's lead assets, you will let the battery float with the lithium, it's not necessary. But if you have a charge controller that uh, for, will force the battery to float, then it's also okay. Um, let your lithium battery to float. This is how a discharge curve looks like and at a different discharge rates. The reason that uh, we took that, um, you know, the discharge curve here, uh, one also show you, uh, first one to show you is you can see in the beginning, at the end, the curve actually dropped very quickly. So um, that's you know very typical with LFP chemistry. It's a different than lead assets, probably a little bit more linear. And uh, you also can see the second message from this graphic is that um, at a different discharging rate, the capacity also gonna varies. So for instance, we have this dark blue here at a 0.2 C which means if you have the EVO 18.5, 2.0.2C is about a 36 amps. So at a 36 amps discharging rate, the capacity, you know, is much higher than if you discharge the battery, let's say, at a 2C, which is going to be like 700, you know, amps. So the slower you charge and discharge battery, the bet more capacity you can get out of and also more cycles you can get out of. That's why it's always good to, you know, slow charge discharge if you can. Uh, and typically, typically the manufacturers want to keep that uh, charge and discharge rate below 0.5 C. Um, because if you above 0.5 C, then you're going to, you know, have some impact on the life, battery lifespan. This is a graphic shows you how the temperature is going to impact on the battery um, capacity and the lifespan. Now 25, the blue line here, this is either reference. So this is a room temperature. Now if you operate the LFP batteries in a hot environment, you can see the capacity is pretty much very, you know, the same, there's no big changes. But if you're starting to use them, especially under the frozen temperature, the 32 Fahrenheit, the capacity is gonna drop. And that also has gonna have impact on battery lifespan. Now. If you look on the data sheet, sometimes they show you discharge, you can go below um, minus four Fahrenheit, but charge, they want you to go frozen temperature. So being said, you still can, if you really have to charge your LFP batteries under the frozen temperature, you can do it, but it has to be very, very small current, like 0.1C, which is, you know, like a few amps if you need to charge your battery. But we do not recommend because again, you know, this is gonna have impact on uh, battery lifespan. The third factor is the depth of discharge. Now, um, the, every time you let your phone die, just like your iPhone, then 
well, frankly speaking, if you do that every day, your battery is going to die much faster. That's why when it's below 20%, it gives you a warning, tell you to charge up your battery. Now let's take a look with our LP chemistry. So if you are discharged every time, you get, you know, probably two or 3,000 cycles. And if you be more disciplined, set up the uh, charge controller and just let the battery discharge 20% and charge back, that means one cycle. And you can get, you know, more than 6,000 cycles. And uh, there's also clients that are more conservative. They want to, you know, uh, have a bigger battery bank and set up double discharge at 50%, then you can get much more cycles. Now, why over 90% global energy storage installed up lithium? As we know, lithium is still more expensive than the you know, lead assets batteries. So here's a graphic to explain why. Now, we are in a renewable energy space. We know efficiency is important. That's why experts in this um, space work very hard to improve efficiency for the panel, inverter, and of course, for the battery as well. The LFP has the best efficiency among you know, all kinds of chemistries that on this chart. The nickel iron has the lowest at 65%. Flood AGM somewhere between 80 to 88 percent. Now, if you let the battery to set up 80 percent double discharge, we provide 6,000 cycles, um, guarantee 6,000 cycles, and the others, you know, are less. The nickel iron is more. Um, they are, you know, they do provide a lot of cycles. The problem we we'll see that the cost is very expensive and very bulky. So it's mainly used by utility company. Off-grade years is if you do one cycle a day, you use a 6,000 divided by 365 days. That's, you're gonna get this number off-grade years. If you use the battery well, our battery can last 15, 16 years. The other lithium iron is like seven, eight years. Nickel iron is excellent. You can last almost 22 years. Now, energy throughput, this is a very important um, term. The energy throughput is the total amount of energy that a battery can be expected to store and deliver power over its lifetime. Now, how does this number come from? You use the nominal capacity. In this case, we use a 10 kilowatt hour battery, multiply double discharge 80%. Remember, we only you know, discharge 80%, charge 80 and discharge 80%. Multiply efficiency, 98%, and multiply 6,000 cycles, you will get 47 megawatt energy throughput with um, um, our LFP10. Now you have also the, with you know, lithium ion, lithium polymer, that's about a half or one fourth the AGM. Lead assets much less. The nickel iron, it's you know close. This is you know the uh, the, the retail suggest so retail price to the homeowner. Again, each country will be different uh, because some countries are subject to um, tariff and also tax and fees, so price will be more. Um, and use this number to divide it: 47 megawatt hour. You are at 14 cents per kilowatt hour with uh, our LFP chemistry. Now we look at flat AGM, that's much more expensive, three or four times. The nickel iron is pretty close, that's why I'm saying, you know, for utilities, they're, they, you know, they like this kind of chemistry. But now, of course, they used to like nickel iron, but now they also shift back to the, you know, lithium chemistries as well. In terms of safety, the LFP and nickel irons are very safe. The other ones, um, either you have the, you know, the combustible um, element, or you can possibly relieve the harmful gas with a um, lead assets family. Um, the flooded AG, lead assets and nickel iron that you need to maintenance. So every six months, you either have to go back, you know, to put the water in or nickel iron, you have to change the ignant. Now, um, also another few things I want to bring to the table here is that um, when we talk about the lithium batteries, then the actual capacity is, uh, the nameplate is your actual capacity. 
So if they say it's a 10 kilowatt hour, you can really get 10 kilowatt hour. Now with the lead assets, typically it's 50%. So if it's a 10 kilowatt hour battery or 200 amp hour battery, you can only get half of that. Um, and another um, big difference is, is if you are in, a, you know, if you turn on heavy duty equipment during a power outage, or you are in a warm area, then you need a, um, your air conditioning operate. So if you use a lead asset battery, then it could die very quickly, uh, the lead assets, because the capacity drops significantly when the power goes up. For the lithium, as long as you operate within the battery management system's parameters, you can expect the battery to last, you know, as it's supposed to. Um, and the impact that um, the lead assets, you know, it, it, or let's say the charging, discharging rate, the temperature, and double discharge that have much bigger impact on the lead assets battery than the lithium batteries. Here, just an example showing the footprint. On the left is AGM batteries, 250 amp, amp uh, hour. It's around a six kilowatt hour usable power. On the right is um, the 360 amp hour, the E-Vote. You can get 18.5 out of it. A quick summary of the LP chemistry um, bandage, safe. You get a you know high energy throughput. It lasts long, very long. You know if you do well, 15, 16 years, and it have, provides you low energy cost. So that's why you see that more and more you know like developers, investors, utilities, or homeowners are invest in. Um, lithium instead of uh, lead assets, batteries. Now, there's a two type of um, systems uh, installed. One's AC coupled. I think here in the States, we're more familiar with AC coupled systems because we have a lot of um, micro inverters or you know, solar age optimizer systems installed. In that cases, you will just hook up a hybrid inverter, AC cup to your existing PV inverter. And, uh, you know, in this case, as you can see, the solar panels, going to go through the PV inverter as an AC, going to the essential load panel. Um, you know, for most of ca cases, people build essential load panel, unless, you know, you have a bigger budget and you want to power your entire home, then you can skip that essential low panel or backup panel and then you have your hybrid inverter connected to the same essential low panel as well as to the main panel in these cases the batteries will be charged v the hybrid inverter uh, you can see you have a multiple conversion here dc to ac right that's what a pv inverter does and goes through two inverters and charge the battery from AC to DC back again. Battery power is usually always DC. So you have more power loss. Um, and uh, again, you know, those two inverters has to communicate very well through the frequency shift. Um, you know, sometimes in a, if you're in off-grid, uh, you have a plane of sun and Battery is fully charged and you're not using too much load. What's going to happen then? The hybrid inverter, the frequency goes up and will ask the PV inverter to shut off for five minutes and come back. Um, it's a little bit annoying. Let's let's say you know that's why DC coupled is really now more preferred. Personally, um, I more prefer DC coupled systems. It's more efficient and uh, you don't have that issue because they're the hybrid inverter are hooked directly to the array and they can regulate the PV production based your battery state of charge, based your uh, current load needs. In the DC couple system, you have solar charge controller. You know, takes the power from the solar panel, charge the battery, and then um, you have the hybrid inverter that's connected to the array as well. Um, can charge, discharge the battery, use the grid. And then also, you know, connect to this uh, backup low panel and the main panel. Uh, I know that is very this DC cover is very popular, you know, in the other countries and here United States. Um, and you don't need additional PV inverter. 
here's a list of inverters that we're compatible with. Uh, we are, you know, for instance, with the Schneider Outback, we are their recommended battery supplier, so for SOAG as well. Um, and if there's any of the inverters that are not on this list, you can, you're welcome to email us and we, our engineering team can take a look and verify that for you. Now I'm gonna quickly talk about the two type of um, systems. One is, you know, when you hook us with a Schneider and Schneider has been on the market for over 10 years, very robust equipment. Um, you have charge controller, you have the inverter and you have also distribution panel. So if you do AC coupling, you just take the charge controller away. Um, if you do DC couple, then you hook up the charge controller. I can do support single and the three phase systems. And it's very works very reliably in a hot environment. So uh, if you are in the you know Central Caribbean, or if you use um, systems you know you worry about in winter or uh, not winter in summer, you're going to suffer from a lot of heat like a cabinet solution that Schneider is a very good equipment um, for that. We team up with them with on the you know on the real world applications. So we team up with a Schneider. Here's some basic technical informations. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go too detail about it because you know a lot of you are probably familiar with that. Um, if not, you can go to the you know website and download the data sheets. Um, the key is here. It has building all the transfer relay, so um, you don't need it. If you have a big system, you will need a separate um, auto transfer um, switch. Smaller one or two inverters, you do not need it. I can AC couple to you know many different PV inverters. The other um, new solution these days is that you have um, inverter and charge controller um, or building, including distribution panel. Um, this is a turnkey solution that we provide, we stock and carry as a turnkey solution for our partners. You can um, do single three phase as well. You can stack up to nine, so really for big systems. And it's very good um, run trip efficiency from the PV to the battery and then from battery to the load, you talk about 7% loss only. So that is very, very good for battery-based systems. It can do the same AC-DC couple. So um, we have a, you know, a slide to show you the, when you AC-DC couple the system, how you wire the system together. Both inverters, I talk about supports, you know, the applications we talked in the early on the off-grid time of use, self-supply, and backup and grid export. So here's some um, technical specification um, on solar and battery. You can send AKW to the essential load panel. When you connect to the grid, you can do more. And uh, you can also pass through you know, up to 12KW production from the PV. <clears throat> and that 12KW can be sent all to the uh, you know, to the grid or partially to the charge of the battery or solar. Depends on the battery state of charge. On terms of storage capacity, you can go from uh, as low as 5 to 222 um, per inverter. It has a very good surge capacity. Also has built-in um, transfer relay, so you don't have any, you know, need uh, any additional auto transfer or uh, switch. It can also AC cup to end phase solar age systems, etc. You can do three phase. Um, actually, I should have changed it here. I forgot to change it in the slides. It used to be three maximum three in one phase, but now all you can do not you can do a, for both nine inverters. And when you do three phase, you put each leg same amount of inverters. You know, if you do one 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 or two 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 or three three three, make sure each leg has an um, equal amount of um, um, inverter. So this is how a DC couple wiring looks like. You have, it's very easy to hook up. You have um, PV coming. There's um, two MPPTs. Each MPPT has two strings. So you can go up to four strings in total. And the battery, you connect to the, you know, to the battery. Here's a battery terminal. And then you have the load, uh, this 240 volts, 50 amps. Backup load panel, you connect to the grid. Use the grid in the output, connect to the grid, to the main panel, and then to the, you know, to the meter and to the grid. 
Uh, if you want to use the generator, you can hook up your generator. Um, what it does, you know, below certain uh, state of charge, the generator, if there's no PV, no grid, the generator will kick on to power the home and charge the batteries. And the AC couple, if you want AC couple, you will do is, you will hook up your AC couple array, your inverter and the battery to the um, backup low panel. In this case, you cannot use a generator. Um, you know, the generator import, input will not work. So that's the, you know, that's a limitation here. So all the other wiring is pretty much the same. This is just show you if you want to do, um, you know, if you had the NEC 2014 code, you need a screen level rubber shutdown. You can use the midnight one. It's very robust. So you have the transmitter, you know, receiver as well as the push button. When you push the button, then uh, the transmitter is going to send in a signal to receiver and disconnect the each strings or if you are at a NAC 2017 code requirement you can use the Tyco rubber shutdown devices and again you know Tyco rubber shutdown devices according to my uh, research uh, our research is very very good solution and works with uh, many different inverters um, the same here you know if you you can initiate the button on the inverter or the button, the local rubber shutdown button, and the transmitter is gonna send information to the receiver and disconnect each panels from each other. Now we're gonna go over quickly on the design guidance here. Um, again, if you want you know, uh, any more detailed training on this, we can certainly do that. Uh, we will also touch base you know, in our separate training section, the design and installation training. Now, there's, um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with how to design a PV, so we're not gonna cover that part. We're gonna just talk about an energy storage part, uh, mainly for backup applications. The first, you're gonna select your loads that you want to move from the main panel to the backup panel. And then based on those uh, circles you selected, you can estimate the daily usage. Then you take a look you know, the usage and also your customer's budget and figure out what autonomy um, they want to achieve a day or two days or even longer. Then you give them a quote, including inverter and a battery. And then um, the last steps, you know, with this tool, you can also estimate the daily available power by months. So if you're in an area that uh, wind and summer has a completely different TV production, it will help you to explain to customer what to expect when the power, during a power outage in different seasons. Now, this tool is available to our authorized installers. For example, this is a, a, a project that um, done by one of our customers. This is, you know, they, it's Excel based, so it's easy to use. We categorize the different home appliances. Now, you go to your customer, you tell them, hey, what do you want to put on the Backup low panel, they tell you the one they, what they do they want to put it on, you select it, and then you type in the quantity, the starting and running voltage, it's already built in. Um, and then you know you're typing hours operation each day. Now, some appliances that we already built in the suggested operating hours, like a energy star rated refrigerator and freezer. It compresses with turns on off, so the actual operating hour is eight. Lights, that depends on you. You want them on four or six hours. That's your personal preference. Now, after you select them, it will give you um, a summary here about you know what total surge power you need if you have everything on at same times. Of course, the likelihood is low but still good, you check that number, and what would be the running wattage if you have everything on at the same times? And you can select different inverters, a building with, you know, Auberg, Schneider, Sorg, a few different inverters, and then type in the quantity. It will show if um, the search and running wattage are within the inverter's threshold. If not, it will, you know, turn on the red to give you a warning. 
And then it's also summarized the total um, energy consumption for the day for 24 hours durations. In this case, it's about 18 kilowatt hour, you know, approximate 18 kilowatt hour. Now, here's the breakdown. Uh, in this case, is you know, like the customer chooses to go with a two of the 10, so 20 kilowatt hour, they want to have a day autonomy. That's a very typical that people want to have at least a day autonomy. If the power goes off and assume there's no sun at all, it can help them last for a day. This project's built in North Carolina. Um, this is, you know, the breakdown by the month, how much energy produced each month, AC energy, uh, consider all the you know, power laws and stuff like that. Um, and then divided by how many days in each month, you get an energy per day. Now we focus on the best and the worst months. The best month is June. You get about 30, close to 37 kilowatt hour. So half of that are gonna go charge the battery. And then the other half, you can use it during the day. Because again, you know, if you don't use them during the day, this pretty much will be curtailed by the uh, PV inverters. In December, it's a little bit different. In December, you're producing about 21. So if your batteries are being discharged, you know, the night before, you want it, that power go to charge the battery so you can use it in the evening. And during the day, you'll be more cautious, you know, about the power you consume. Now, this is, is that a perfect number? No, but at least you give the clients some ideas what to expect. But of course, if you live in the Caribbean or Hawaii, then you don't have that concern too much because throughout the year, it's pretty much very consistent production. If you need any help with a time of use, self-supply and demand curtailment projects, and we encourage you to send, you know, to the sales at fortresspower.com. And we are, our, you know, sales team will work with our engineering team to get a proposal back to you. Now, we need more dealers. We have a lot of dealers, but we need more. We need more dealer and installers um, from all over the place to help us to bring the clean, affordable energy storage to homes and businesses. So we encourage you, if you're interested, um, there's a form you can fill out, sign it up, and we give you, you know, product training, sales training, and as well as, you know, more in-depth design installation training. Uh, and of course, if you need any help with the system design, we'll be more than happy to help out. And that's, uh, you know, that's my contact information here. Again, you know, I think um, we all learn very uh, well from what's happening in the world is, um, what really comes down important for people's life is about food, water, electricity, and you know med medicine and then the love the love you you know people care about each other so um let's you know all work together to make the the earth to be a much better place for the next generations and um now we're going to start with the question section okay thank you jing um i have a couple of questions here the first question came in from hector He's asking, you indicate a warranty of up to 6,000 cycles. What is the equivalent depth of discharge of these 6,000 cycles? It's at 80% uh, depth of discharge. Hector, if you remember the cycles we see on a graphic, you know, at 80% depth of discharge, we, you know, we guarantee 6,000 cycles. And uh, that's mainly for people if they need, you know, one cycle a day. Um, a lot of customers we have there just for backup, they will go with a 90% double discharge. So they can, you know, 3,000 cycle in that case is sufficient for them. So they may need it just, you know, a few times a month or even, um, you know, a, a quarter. Okay. And he's also asking a follow up question of can you offer any depth of discharge versus number of cycles warranty curve? Um, the double discharge versus the, that, that's a graphic um, I present to you. That graphic is actually in relation of the double discharge um, versus the cycles. Now, uh, Hector, I'll be more than happy if we can, uh, you know, uh, offline talk one-to-one -one and I can dive more into that graphic with you. Okay. Uh, Eshwar is asking, is it possible to get a copy of the storage sizing tool? Yes. Uh, Abner is asking how the, how the disposal of LFP batteries looks like. 
Now, that's a very good question. I'm not an expert on that. Um, there is some, um, I know that, you know, in Europe and China, there is already a um, past company that are specialized in dispose that you get a battery back. What it would do is, you know, it take the uh, battery management system, the iron case or the aluminum case, and then the really the key is the, you know, the, the, the batteries. Um, you take the, the shelf off and then inside of the chemistry, that's the difficult part to recycle. How that part being done, um, Abner, this is beyond my knowledge. And are we okay. expect in a, with more deployment in the, uh, in the US and uh, other part of the world, I'm sure there will be also company um, that are going to be able to provide that recycle, recycling as well, service here. Okay, uh, Paul is asking, I already have lead acid batteries. Can I add lithium batteries to, um, to increase capacity? Uh, that doesn't work well, Paul. Um, there are completely two different battery chemistry, lead assets, you know, people call the dummy battery, there's no brain, no, uh, the lithium that is, um, you know, it's had a battery management systems. So that, uh, we never did that test before. And just, you know, from a, purely from the engineering point of view, that is not recommended. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Does anybody have any additional questions? Yeah, it looks like that people are um, pretty, there's not much questions. So it looks like people are probably familiar with the lithium batteries. Uh, there's not much question this time. Or you answered their questions. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Good. So we have uh, um, just a quick, you know, uh, we have our actually new uh, uh, sales manager for Central Latin America market. Um, Mario just joined us, and he just uh, as fun. He said, "Okay, you can talk about me." So I just want to mention his name, and he's the new uh, account manager for Central Caribbean uh, down to the South American market. Um, Mario, thank you for raising that. Okay. Uh, I don't think we have any more questions. If you guys have any questions, you can always email us at, hold on. Yeah. Uh, you can always email us at uh, sales at fortresspower.com or you have Jing's information here if you want to reach her directly. So yeah. uh, if you have any other questions, please feel free to call us or email us. Yeah. Uh, sure, I have actually just see uh, Lennox is uh, pop out and ask, will the webinar be available afterwards? Now, for all your folks, we're going to send you the presentation slides, and also we will, um, we have also webinar report. You can um, share with your colleague who can join the webinar, and of course, we do host webinar regularly. Um, so, you know, staying tuned, and if any of you have any questions, feel free to contact us. That's why we are here, you know, for you guys. And also, please go to our YouTube channel. All of these webinars are listed on our YouTube channel if you want to re-listen to any of them. And uh, there are different kind of webinars available. So check out Fortress Power on YouTube. Thank you, folks. Stay Thank safe. You. And bye. 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 See, talk to you later.